What's up guys, it's Arash here, and you're wondering what the heck am I doing outside today? I am showing you how to use the new Blackmagic app for the iPhone, and I'm gonna do a quick run through on how to use it. So we're gonna start from the left side. So this left side, you're gonna see down in the bottom left is something called a histogram. This tells us how much of it is exposed, how much of the picture is exposed, how much of it is underexposed and overexposed, and it's giving you the different color values. So if I take this shutter right now, and I take it up, you're gonna see histogram move towards the left, which means that it is getting darker and it's becoming more underexposed. Now, if I take the shutter and I take it all the way down to the lowest that it goes, you're gonna see it get super bright and the histogram has gone completely to the right because it is gone, the picture is lost, there's no more detail left in there. So. Since I'm outdoors right now, and I don't have an ND filter for this camera, I am forced to go to um, one over 1000, but I'm gonna change my frames per second to um, 60. So I did that, and I'm cool with that, and the shutter I'm actually gonna take up a little higher. And with the iPhones, I do, with phones in general, I do try to underexpose slightly because it looks more cinematic than blowing stuff out. So I can see this right here and the background isn't super blown out and that looks good to me. Now, if I was following someone, I would actually take this down all the way to 1 8,000 because if I move this way, I don't want this to be um, overexposed at all. So let's go back to this. I'm gonna click the little fan and the lenses that you have, you have a 24 millimeter, a super wide 13 millimeter, a uh, zoom 77 millimeter, and then you have the front one, which is me right here. So I prefer to use the 24 because it seems to give the least, um, the least artificial look because the front and the 13 seem to look a little digital to me because of the lens that it's using. Ideally, you'd wanna use the 77 to zoom in. So if I wanna use the 77 like this, that looks good. But for most things, you're probably gonna use the 24 and use your feet to move forward and backwards. Frames per second, you see they're between 24 to 60. If you're using slow-mo, you wanna do the 60. If you're shooting a talking head, you can do 24 or up to 30. Um, I usually don't shoot 25, that's for the European countries. Same with 50, those are PAL. We usually do 24, 30, or 60. If you think about sitcoms, they were usually, usually shot in the 30s back in the day. Movies are usually shot in 24, slow motion sh scenes shot in 60 and slow down to 24. Now, because I'm outdoors and I'm somewhat restricted, I am gonna shoot 60 and I am gonna change the shutter up a little bit so that it looks a little bit more cinematic next we got iris that we can't control it's locked there right now and i am going to lock this uh, shutter so that it doesn't move this up here in the top the 412 is the amount of time that i've recorded in this scene next we have iso so you can increase iso to give in more light the problem with increasing iso is that you're introducing grain to the shadows which is not good and when you're introducing grain, phones or even lots of mirrorless cameras, they're gonna add artificial noise reduction, which degrades your footage or makes it look more video-ish. So that's why we wanna to try to keep ISO uh, as low as possible, at least on the iPhone. When you have cinema cameras or certain mirrorless cameras, they have a native ISO, which can be 640 or 800 or 3200. And those are the ones that you can kind of, um, you wanna keep at that native ISO. Uh, but there are times when I break that rule as well. Next, you have white balance. So we're outdoors. Outdoors is usually 55 to 5800. Uh, if you want it to look a little bit cooler, let's say you're filming something more serious, you're doing a, a video for a commercial for a medical place, and it's indoor, you want to take this down and take into account incandescent lighting. But if I'm shooting outdoors and I want it to be warm or a wedding, things like that, I might make it a little bit warmer. If you saw my last video, it was shot at like 7,000 Kelvin because I was outdoors, I was filming my kid. There are presets here. You can do sunlight, incandescent lighting. You can change it yourself. You can do shade, cloudy. You can use these if you don't know, but I like to dial it in um, and I will probably keep it around 
this for now. You got tint. Tint is your magenta and green shift. Um, it does an okay job on its own, so you can kind of trust what it's doing. You can control it too if you're seeing, if there's mixed lighting, this is gonna be difficult. You're gonna see either magenta tint or green tint that usually comes with mixed lighting, like in, incandescent with natural light coming in from a window. Um, you can lock that as well. Um, next, you have your shooting in 4K. You have your audio meter down here in the bottom. You have the amount of space left. It says I have used 55% of my um, iPhone, so I have, I believe, 262 gigabytes left. This top right square is we have more options. So if we turn this on, this is your uh, zebraing, I believe. So zebraing allows you to see where is uh, overexposed. So if I decrease this, you see the zebraing coming in. That means that is completely overexposed and the highlights are blown out and there's no detail left in there. So that's a way to gauge if what you're shooting is um, well exposed. Then you have um, autofocus. So you can always click something to have it go in focus or you can manually control it if you wanna rack focus. If you wanna click auto, it does a pretty good job. It's just that when you wanna control it yourself, you can change that. Next we got, this is the exposure value that is controlling the ISO. I don't really like to control this and you can control it up there, but I try to keep ISO at a minimum like I explained. This is your record button if you wanna record. Um, this is your stabilization, so you can keep this off and it's not gonna stabilize. You can go to standard, but it's gonna crop in a little bit. Cinematic and extreme. I like to just keep it at cinematic and then we have a zoom feature so you can zoom in, which is pretty cool. Obviously, as you zoom in, you're gonna see more degradation, the, the artificial um, parts of the video. Then we got the slate. You can pick if you want to write scenes, takes, interior, exterior, all that info on the slate. And there's more information right there. So that's pretty much it on filming with your camera. You can go to media to view your clips. You can go to chat if you want to, I guess, write comments if you've sent this to the cloud. If you have a cloud account with Blackmagic. Settings. This is a place where you can choose your codec, your resolution, if you need to shoot in 1080. Um, if I guess there's anamorphic uh, controls on here. If you have a LUT that you wanna add on, you can choose your LUT. A uh, whole bunch of things you can control here. Absolutely amazing that they have that, that then the app is also free. So I would maybe choose 77, check this out. I'm shooting at 60, one 1000. Let's record this. And you know how it's flashing right now? I think those are drop frames because I'm trying to record the screen and I'm trying to record the media. So I think that's why it's flashing like that. But that's the gist of it. Hope you guys um, got something out of this. Uh oh, look at the zebra ain't going down. So what can we do to get rid of that? We can increase the shutter. We should get rid of that. There we go. If we don't like how this looks, if this looks too warm, remember we can cool it. We can warm it up all the way. All right, guys. This is Arash. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you want to see any other tests. And go have fun. Go use your camera, your iPhone professionally. Man, I look greasy.